Last week in the House of Representatives was not a uh, very good time for the Republic. The big bill last week that was passed, uh, narrowly so, was the cap and trade. The vote was 219 to 212. There were eight Republicans that uh, voted for the bill, and some people suppose that, oh, if those Republicans only had voted correctly and voted against it, that bill would have gone down, but that's not necessarily so. There were 44 Democrats that uh, voted against the package, and they were on line to switch their vote if they had had to. So about the, the only thing the eight votes did by the Republicans to vote uh, against the package was give more uh, leniency to the Democrats who would have been in political trouble if they had voted uh, for it. So this uh, is, is a system that is generally known in Washington how, how voting uh, works. But it was interesting. One Democrat talked to me, a friend of mine, and he was, uh, I said, well, how are you going to vote on this bill? He said, well, I'm going to vote uh, for the bill. But then he sort of uh, whispered, he says, but I sure hope it doesn't pass. I said, what do you mean? You don't want to, you're not going to, you're going to vote for it and you hope it doesn't pass. He said, oh yeah, I have to do that. And I says, are there any other Democrats that are going to be voting for it and they really don't like the bill? And I said, oh yeah, about 15 or 20 of them. But, but that's, that's unfortunately the way the, uh, the, the system works. But I thought the Republican Party did a pretty good job in standing up against this bill. They were outraged over uh, what cap and trade will do. It's going to be a real detriment to our economy. It's going to be very costly and push up energy prices. And who knows how many unintended consequences uh, we'll run into down the road. Of course, it has to pass the Senate. But if it does get past the Senate, obviously uh, Obama will sign uh, this, this bill. But the, uh, the fact that the Republicans did a very good job proves the point that they are pretty good at l trying to limit government size when they're out of office, when they have no responsibility. Because a year or so ago, this uh, wouldn't have uh, been the same message that the uh, Republicans revealed last week. But they're also gearing up for fighting against uh, national health care, socialized medicine. And I think that is very good, too. And they express this outrage, which is very justified. But my problem with all this is they don't show any outrage in other, other areas. Why, why is there no outrage uh, with the perpetuation of war, the expansion of the war in Afghanistan, uh, the, uh, uh, the f uh, movement of the fighting into Pakistan? This last week, we spent, uh, we authorized $680 billion for the military. And uh, believe me, very little of that will provide true national defense for us. And, uh, and, and there's no outrage over the national security courts. Uh, one of the outrages over the previous administration were these secret courts and, 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 and permanent uh, detention without court hearings, these military tribunals. They're going to, they're going to be continued. And uh, to me, there should be outrage. It's interesting that uh, some Democrats uh, who are outraged over this, they vote for the cap and trade. And the Republicans who are outraged over cap and trade, they vote for perpetual war and, uh, and, and, and this uh, permanent uh, unlimited detention without uh, hearings in court. So that's where our, our real problem is, and that we have to try to get the people uh, to put this together. Now, the legal justification for unlimited uh, detention, which Obama's planning to perpetuate with an executive order, is that the legal experts have explained it that if there's no law prohibiting the president from writing an executive order, therefore it must be okay. Now, that is absolutely bizarre that a president can do anything he wants unless the Congress writes a law that says he can't do it. Uh, so everything is legal except that which is prohibited by law by the, uh, by the Congress. What, what good is the Constitution? The Constitution is supposed to hold Congress and the courts and the president in check. So this is the reason it marches on. And I would think there'd be a lot of Democrats and a lot of progressives and a lot of anti-war people uh, civil libertarians that should be outraged over what Obama is doing in the military, foreign policy, civil liberties area. And, of course, I would like to see the day when the Republicans who are rightfully and truly outraged over the economic tragedy that we're facing with this weak economy and then the administration piling on with cap and trade and socialized medicine, why we can't put that outrage together and say, look, 
why don't we just follow the Constitution and get back to our senses and balance our budget and have sound money? That is what we need, and hopefully uh, we will wake up and the people in this country will have enough uh, influence in Washington to finally uh, bring this expanding uh, government that uh, literally is undermining our liberties.